Kyoto Automotive is excited to be one of the first customers in the Northwest to get a TLX Type S. This exciting new car is an all new platform for Acura with an all new engine, a dual overhead cam, twin scroll turbocharged V6 with SH all wheel drive. Kyoto has been following the development of this car for some time. Find out more now on Road to the TLX Type S. Welcome to the Heel Toe Garage. Uh, I've got a little bit of a special episode for you today all about TLX Type S. As some may know, if you've been following us on social media, we actually put a reservation on a TLX Type S that is supposed to arrive at our dealership really any day now. Technically, we're getting a demo, um, so they're gonna sell it to us, but not for probably another 60 days. So it's pretty much gonna be sitting on the showroom for a little while. We actually will get the very first one to arrive at Ron Tonkin Acura in Portland. So our actual journey towards this Type S starts almost all the way back to when we moved to the Portland area in 2012. We came from Southern California, moved up here, and uh, running heel toe, one of the things that we uh, provide to our customers is a whole host of genuine OEM products, uh, accessories, replacement parts, things like that. We needed a new local dealer here to handle that, and Ron Tonkin Acura was the closest one to us. It did not take long for us to develop a really nice relationship with uh, the folks over there. Todd in the parts department's always been really great. Uh, he's the parts manager over there, Becky, sales and finance. And um, at one point, actually ran into one of our old customers there, Ira, uh, who had just bought a new, to him, uh, blue NSX. Uh, we had an opportunity to take a little bit of a quick photo shoot out front with the, this car, the HT Spec TSX. Uh, came to find out really quickly that the general manager at Tonkin Acura, Jim Brown, like a real enthusiast. He's very excited about these cars. He, uh, he actually does all the social media posting for the dealership, the guy right at the top. So Jim has been a great guy to know when it comes to being able to take a car out and, and test it for a little bit of an extended test drive. He actually put us on the short list to test drive a brand new Acura NSX, the NC1 when it came out. Um, when I got that call, I was over there in a heartbeat. One of the local Acura reps brought the car through and uh, we got a chance to drive it. I had a lot of fun driving that thing around the hills. I think I probably put about 30 or 40 miles on it. That was a really eye-opening experience. And uh, one of the things I walked away from from that experience was that Acura had really started to get reborn. That NSX is a hugely underappreciated performance car, uh, is definitely a high caliber machine. Um, but really the way that it looks and the whole design direction for the entire Acura brand is wrapped up in that NC1 NSX. And you can kind of see it now, you know, the RDX got redesigned, the facelift on the ILX, and then now with this new Type S concept, really doubling down on that. Speaking of the concept, for a long time I've been sort of plugged into the uh, Historic Motorsports Association where all the membership for historic racing happens. The most popular and most well-known event that they put on happens at Monterey once a year during Monterey Car Week. The, what it's called now is the Rolex Monterey Motorsports Reunion. All kinds of vintage and historic race cars gather to race on track. And as it just so turns out, Acura had a really nice presence there. Uh, the Spice Acura prototype cars were there. A whole host of Acura race cars were on display as they're showing off the new Indy Yellow paint job on the NSX. It was a very big PR uh, move, uh, Acura, to have that kind of presence at our MMR in 2019. And I was actually able to uh, get an invite through a friend uh, Tyson Huey, who is definitely an Acura brand advocate more than almost anybody else. He's got a great collection of cars and he's really well plugged into Acura. Got me an invite to the Type S concept reveal. That was super cool. I've never really had an opportunity to attend a private uh, event like that, uh, especially for a brand that's so like important to me and my company. You know, I got to meet John Ikeda, uh, some other industry friends and acquaintances were there. Got to see Peter Cunningham, Parker Johnstone, who owns the uh, Spice Acura from back in the day. Also, Jay Hare, uh, head of the Type R Club. All kinds of great people uh, were at that event, and it just felt really special to rub a little bit of shoulders with them and chat them up. Uh, but the real big deal was the reveal. 
uh, and somehow I was able to be right up front. I was so close, in fact, that I couldn't even get the whole concept car in the frame as they pulled the covers off. Yeah, I mean, right up front, really easy to see all the details in that car right away. Things that jumped right out at me obviously were the blue color. The color really popped, and I'm so glad to see that the new TLX does come with Apex Blue on it. Uh, other things that jumped out at me, uh, I love the gray wheels. I like the performance look that the darker colored wheels add. I think it just really shows that they're looking more towards performance more than just a stylish car. Although the car was very stylish. It's got a long hood on it, almost looks like it's supposed to be a rear wheel drive car. I think that we all know that that car is never gonna be a rear wheel drive car. It's just not what Honda does. I definitely think that all wheel drive was gonna be an expectation from day one. Although this was just a concept and they weren't really talking about powertrains at this time. This is just the Type S concept. Uh, and Type S in name, they didn't call it a TLX, but I think it, me and everybody else there expected that that's what the new TLX redesign was sort of going to look like. They have a lot of carbon fiber, forged carbon pieces on the outside of the concept, which I don't know, is a little bit trendy, it's a little bit gaudy. That kind of thing I'm sure wouldn't make it to production. You know, it's a concept. It's not even a driving car. So they had to dress it up somehow, I think with some high tech features and carbon fiber is such a great way to go and forged carbon being modern, I guess it fits. The one thing that we did get really excited about was the exposed exhaust tips at the back, which means that our in-house exhaust brand ATLP is gonna have a direction to go with product on Acura going forward. There's a big span there where the MDX and the TLX and the ILX didn't have exposed exhaust tips. And it's really kind of unfortunate. Putting those exhaust tips on there and quad tips at that harken back to the previous TL Type S. And like I said, gives us an opportunity to say, hey, like, let's put some cool aftermarket exhausts on this car. Cause pretty much that's something that everybody does in addition to adding wheels. Ultimately, as an Acura fan, I was super appreciative of being able to be there. I had a nice little chat uh, with Tyson and John Ikeda and came away just really inspired by that Type S concept and the future of Acura. Uh, I think everybody sort of knows that a concept car has got all these design details that you're just not gonna get to production. Uh, and you could just read the string of comments. You gotta love the internet, all the negative about, oh, it's not gonna look like that and whatever. Well, you know, you never really know what it's gonna end up looking like until it actually hits a showroom. Of course, there's height requirements. The headlights have to be, you know, those cool chicane headlamps have to be so high off the ground. You're not just in America, but global regulations say, you know, there's crash safety that has to be considered, ease of use, you know, ease of manufacturing. So of course, you know, you see a concept and the finished version is gonna be a different car. Well, fast forward into September, 2020, um, sort of mid pandemic, as a matter of fact, the dealerships are still open and the TLX A-Spec is sitting on the lot. Um, we actually got a chance to go check that out. Couldn't drive it, but uh, Jim gave me full access. So the lines and proportion of the car definitely are hearkening back to that concept. It's got the long hood, it's got the aggressive stance, it's got the dark colored wheels, uh, all the right finishes on the outside. I learned that there was some really neat new laser welding process done uh, over the doors. So to attach the roof to the side panels, uh, it's a high tech new process. You notice it's a seamless finish there. There's no molding. That's, usually there's a molding there to cover up a weld seam and they don't have to do that on TLX. Uh, exciting stuff for me under the hood was obviously this really cool two liter turbo engine. The K20C6, basically a different version of the FK8 Civic Type R engine and the engine that's in the 10th generation Accord. Already proven to be a very stout engine, capable of making all kinds of power, uh, but pretty efficient too. So turbo four cylinder doesn't really sound too uh, sexy and amazing, but you know, this is a really good one. I don't think that we could ask for a whole lot more. There is a ton of room in the engine bay though. Uh, obviously we know that a Type S is coming. We know by this time that it's gonna have a V6 that's got either one or two turbos on it. But you can definitely see the framework for it is built into this TLX A-Spec. Another cool feature that I noticed right away was the cast alloy upper shock mounts. Uh, so first things first, these are shock mounts, not strut mounts. This car doesn't have struts, it's got shocks in it. It's a double wishbone front end. And then these cast tops are definitely rigid, well-designed pieces, something that you don't normally find in, uh, in modern cars, actually. Um, maybe higher-end European cars will have sections like this. 
But when you make that cap, all of the die cast material with those strengthening ribs there, um, it's very rigid. It provides a very good strong place for the shocks to mount to. That little design detail right there, engineering detail, told me everything I needed to know about the whole car, as a matter of fact, that this car is made for performance. And I just love that. Uh, it's really starting to look like this TLX is gonna be a very exciting car. This platform is totally new. Uh, previous TL or TLX models were very closely related to the Accord, um, maybe a little bigger, more luxurious, more powerful, but still based on the Accord to where parts are sort of cross compatible. You know, even like a Tane suspension kit, for example, one for the uh, ninth generation Accord fits on a first generation TLX. It's the same exact part number from Tane. That's not gonna work on this car. The TLX here, the second gen TLX, is a completely new car. It's its own platform. And uh, that's something you haven't really seen much from Acura, maybe in the RL uh, and RLX are unique cars to Acura. But most of the Acuras have been based somewhat on some kind of a Honda platform that's been evolved. Like Acura has its own platform with which to build a sports sedan on. Uh, and actually, you know, that, that continues on with the Type S. The engine that's coming in the Type S TLX is unique to Acura. It won't appear in any Honda models. So that right there is just telling you like, you know, John Akeda and the team has really doubled down on. We want Acura to be a, its own brand with its own vision and we're going back to that performance angle. You know, the interior is also really nice on this car. The interior design really did remind me a little bit of how the uh, NSX was laid out when I drove that car in the past. Just the way the center stack was and the dynamic um, selector knob in the middle, it all looked pretty NSX-ish. And that's not the only thing that actually came from the NSX. This car is brake by wire, which is something that came from the NSX as well got adaptive dampers in it, which is a pretty cool feature as well. Uh, so when you change that knob in the middle, not only do your throttle inputs change, but the um, dampers will change as well. So fast forward a little bit farther into 2021, we're building up the HT Spec UA9, and after putting some uh, chain suspension on this car, it needed to get an alignment. So here I go to Tonkin Acura to get my alignment done, and Jim says, hey, you want to test drive the TLX A-Spec? Um, so he tossed me the keys to a really cool gray TLX A-Spec model and I got to take it on a bit of an extended test drive. This is pretty cool. The all-wheel drive uh, display will show a swell of power going to each corner as I hit the gas. So I'm finding the different drive modes really do make a difference in the driving experience. I had it in sport, of course I had it in sport, um, but once I started in this neighborhood on some uh, grades, it really seemed like the throttle was a bit too twitchy and even in um, normal, it just started feeling like it wanted to go, but I'm just trying to be mellow, you know what I mean? I put it in comfort mode and it was much easier to drive through that neighborhood, you know, without being annoying. Hard for somebody like me to admit that comfort was the better mode to be in. Now here we are in some twisting roads. Let's stick it in sport again. Definitely feels like it wants to respond a little better to the turns and the suspension takes a set a little bit better. Yeah, the car feels really good overall. All right, well, I had a little bit of fun in this thing and uh, I th can definitely say that it handles great and it feels great. The power is very good. It's uh, probably tough for the transmission to keep up with what the driver's trying to do. There's a lot of gears in this thing, and I did find that the paddles were nice for doing some sporting upshifting and downshifting in really quick driving, uh, with, where there's fast turns and on and off the gas a lot. It's hard for the transmission to predict what gear I'm really trying to be in. Mostly did a really pretty good job. Uh, I think if I was going just a notch slower, it would have been perfect. The suspension feels very sharp. The turn-in is really good. There's a really nice response. It doesn't feel like you're super connected to the ground. You, you can feel the road. You can feel what the road is doing, what the tires are doing, but it's almost like the bushings are too soft and there's like this weird delay. It just seems like there's this weird little float in between uh, your inputs and what the car does. Never really feels like the car doesn't have control but it just doesn't have that really button down feeling. Maybe that's 
partly to blame because my TSX has um, such sharp, uh, you know, spherical bushings in it. I wonder how easy that is to turn off. Mute navigation voice. Navigation help. If you would like to find a point of interest no. or address, that wasn't what I wanted. Find or go to before the destination. You can say a specific yeah, address. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted it to be quiet. Chicago, Illinois, and it's talking way more. Or a category like Oh my gosh. No. Shut up. Quiet. Cancel. Cancel. It just sort of feels like the car could be a little bit sharper feeling, especially when you're going over a bump and a turn. It, it always feels stable, but sometimes it just feels a little bit too floaty, I guess. Good sports dampers would probably help quite a bit. Or maybe we just need a Type S. This is an A-Spec, which is an appearance in sports package but uh, probably more appearance than sports. With other Honda and Acura models, the uh, trim level of A-Spec or HFP is sportier for sure than the standard car, but not the sport model. I think the Type S is gonna end up being that really sharp driving car. It uh, was a nice all-around test drive. I'm really appreciative that um, uh, Jim basically put the car in my hands. There's nobody else here. Just got to do it on my own, which is rad. Obviously, amenities galore, but I want to call out the stereo system. Boy, it sounds amazing. It sounds really good. And I got into the uh, the audio settings, and it allows you to control bass, treble, and mid-range, of course. But then you've got the volume on the ceiling speaker, which I don't even know where that is, and then the volume on the center channel speaker, too. And when I turn those up a little bit, wow, the whole thing just lit up. Yeah, it's got all kinds of power, very refined. Of course, this is no NSX. I drove it through a lot of the same hills and the NSX is sharp as a knife. Uh, this thing is uh, sharp, responsive, as I think a uh, as an everyday driver, you would be wanting for very little. You know, as Mr. Heeltoe, the guy who is helping outfit your guys' Acuras and Hondas with all kinds of high performance bits, yeah, this car is a little bit soft around the edges, as any probably new car you would expect would be. The car does feel very good, but all of the settings and everything that are in that car exist in the other TLXs also. The way the interior is designed and the way that it looks, the A-Spec is definitely the enthusiast's choice And uh, when it comes to, I just sort of want a new TLX. There was something a little bit wanting in there for somebody who drives a car like that and a car like that and a car like that. You know, I'm looking for something a little sharper, a little bit more aggressive. Um, you know, more power, sure, I'll never turn that down. But uh, even just the way the chassis is tuned, it just feels like maybe it needed a little bit more than the sport setting that was in that dynamic range. You know, here we are, the Type S, right? All we could do was speculate up until a couple of months ago, and now we find out that Type S not only has that 355 horsepower uh, turbocharged V6, but it's also got all-wheel drive, which we were expecting as well. It's got a Sport Plus mode, that extra sport on top of uh, the sport that's on the um, regular TLX. It's got a whole new re redesigned suspension, the dampers and springs. I'm imagining that the shocks and struts, shocks and springs will all be interchangeable with the standard TLX, but of course they're tuned very differently. We've even learned that the subframe and much of the undercarriage is a little bit different as well to accommodate the different engine and the different performance capability of the car. Of course, we've got some new colors, and Tiger Eye Pearl being the most prominent of them, that's the one that they're touting the most. That color is the first one that's coming to Tonkin Acura, and that's the one that's slated for us with the ebony interior. Harkening back to the Type S concept, there is a carbon fiber package available. These are just uh, basically look like dealer installed accessories, or a spoiler, a diffuser, and an interior package of carbon fiber items that you can get on the Type S, which I've already signed up for. Definitely want those. We were the second person to go to Tonkin and put a deposit down on one, our other, uh, the other person was Ira, our friend that Ford mentioned had the other NSX. Um, we're sort of at odds about colors because uh, contrary to what people believe, you don't order uh, a Honda or an Acura car. You can say that you want uh, a Tiger Eye or a Red, but the dealership gets what they get and then they can sell it to you. 
can't put it in a special order uh, to get one that you want. Now the dealer can uh, allocate the next one that's coming for you or they can find one at another dealership and trade it and get one for you. Uh, Jim asked me, what color do you want? And I said, well, I kind of want Tiger Eye. After talking with Elise for a little while, we settled on red as being a little bit more on the heel toe brand, a very exciting color. Um, and plus, Ira had already requested the first Tiger Eye, uh, but he wanted the Orchid interior. Once we found out that the first car that was coming was Tiger Eye with Ebony, Ira sort of passed because he wanted uh, the Orchid. We said, hey, you know what? I'm not going to turn down a chance to get first in line. I said, yeah, man, switch us to Tiger Eye. The performance red is awesome, but I think we'll make the uh, newest, boldest color work out pretty well for us. It's a little bit bittersweet because it's going to show up and then we're not going to be able to take it because <laughs> it's got to stay at the dealership for a while. They technically can't sell it uh, until that 60 days has passed. What we're going to try to do is get some access to the car, uh, maybe take some videos of the undercarriage, maybe even install some of those accessories that come ahead of time. Jim did say that we could drive it. I might be able to take it to uh, a couple of events that are coming up. More to come on all that. Heel toe and Acura, right? Uh, heel toe loves Hondas. Acura comes kind of as an extension off of Honda. The Acura brand uh, started with us with a couple of Integras. I had a 1990 Integra four-door that I absolutely loved. The DA model as it was, very spaceship-like and felt like you were riding right on the ground. It was almost like a baby version of the NSX. I kind of feel that way when I'm driving the NSX. It almost brings me back to that super low sloping hood that was on my DA Integra. And I absolutely loved it. Uh, likewise, Elise, early on in our relationship, she had 1996 uh, Integra GSR, which today she says was one of her most favorite cars that she's ever had. Uh, as our family developed, we got into bigger and bigger vehicles and a uh, first generation MDX. That was a really, really great car. Uh, as an SUV goes, um, they drive really well. We'd also had a 4Runner at one point and a first generation Pilot, and nothing really was quite like that first generation MDX. It makes total sense why the MDX is such a, uh, an important model for Acura because right from the get-go, they made something that was spacious, sporty enough, very comfortable, had a lot of features, uh, and very reliable. We ended up with a second generation MDX Sport Technology model. That thing um, was definitely a quick car, uh, had the really fancy magneto rheological dampers in it with that sport button in the console. Uh, ours was uh, kind of a unique build. It had the side steps on the side, the flat ones, um, but was also kind of a slick top version. Didn't have any roof rack, I mean. I even towed our trailer uh, behind it a few times. It really wasn't that great for towing something as big and heavy as our enclosed trailer. Hey, you know what? That thing was a real trooper and we loved it. Uh, fast forward to now and we've got this HT Spec UA9. This car is absolutely amazing. It's a all-wheel drive manual model. Pretty rarely produced car. Actually was a demo at some point. We have the original window sticker for it and it has a zero dollar uh, amount on it because it was a sort of like pre-sale model that got brought to the dealership. Uh, we were lucky enough to happen upon that when Elise needed a new car for a new job that she got. Uh, and of course, the Acura TSX. Where would heel toe be without an Acura TSX? It's our number one model that uh, we support right, right alongside the third and fourth generation TLs. This car has been modified in so many different ways. The engine is mostly stock, but I don't think there's hardly any bolt that I've not taken off and put back on, right down to the custom color. And don't let the Honda badging fool you. The TSX is a really great car. Um, is sold elsewhere in the world as a Honda Accord, um, but it still, I think, has that Acura cachet. It's got a little bit nicer dashboard than the foreign Accords have. It's got a little bit more equipment. So the TSX and the TL uh, are all really important cars to us. Back in 2004, when this car actually came out, um, we test drove one and actually had one really early on. Um, we also test drove the TL at that time. It's definitely a powerful car and handled really great, but it did feel rather large to us, people who are used to a little bit smaller cars. The TSX was a much better fit for us personally. Uh, although at one point uh, we did end up getting a TL Type S, Moroccan red actually, with a black interior and a manual transmission. Very rare combination. As I can think about it, the only Type S we've ever really had. Anyway, the Type S is something that just, aside from that brief stint with the third generation uh, TL, 
is one that we haven't really um, been able to engage with. The prospect of a new Type S coming out, having another chance to own one as new, became very exciting to us. I'm really glad uh, that that car is coming. I'm glad that Acura made it. Unlike many of the other reviewers and things that are on YouTube, uh, they'll take the car, review it, and then be gone, right? On to the next car. Well, I really don't care about what Audi is doing. I don't really care about what Mazda is doing or, or anybody else, right? I'm not gonna review a new Bronco when it comes out either. We're gonna stick with this car and develop parts for it and share it with you. Uh, so then that way you can uh, experience the car just as we do. More to come on that. For now, I really appreciate you watching this and coming along on this little bit of a tail. Uh, TLX and Type S has been on our radar for now a couple of years. It's been one of those things like, what's this car gonna be like? And now we finally get to find out. Thanks again for watching and definitely stay tuned for more TLX Type S content and more uh, content from the rest of our garage. We've got a video series coming out on this UA9, not to be trifled with either. You know, definitely a good alternative to a TLX if you don't have the money for that new car. Seek one of these out, you won't be disappointed. And of course, we've done a lot to the TSX before we started ramping up our YouTube channel. I'd like to do some features on this car as well so that you can get a little bit more acquainted with what's going on here. And uh, of course, this CRX project is off in the corner, but not forgotten. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Heeltoe is in your corner with all the best Honda and Acura news information and resource and of course, parts.